I wish this the the what the option to beat the game and just hear him talk. Oh, so you guys just you just just want like just an ASMR stream? Is that is that really what this is? All right. All right. So it was a prompt. You can make a, a bedtime story for me about slugs eat beans. Okay. It's got to have anime as cool as in it. All right. Let me see here. Let me see what I can do. Hmm. You know, maybe I shouldn't play the game while I'm doing this. No, I could play the game while I'm doing this. <laughs> That'll make it weirder. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a small hovel off in the desert, in a small mud hut, a small mud shack made of wood and stone and bone of his enemies. <laughs> Anime is cool. Was sitting. <laughs> playing with his slug friends. There were three slugs. One named Anthony, Chico, and Merida. I forget what the first one's name was. <laughs> Chico, Merida, what the, Annabelle? Whatever, Annabelle, is, that's her name now, I'm dead. Annabelle. <laughs> Annabelle, Chico, and Merida. These slugs were best friends, just as anime was best friends with them. They would share stories, they would laugh, but most importantly, they would share beans with one another. Anime would head on down to the local bulk barn, <laughs> and he would pick up various amounts of beans, different kinds of beans, all kinds. White beans, black beans, pinto, even green beans from time to time when they sold them. And he would lay them out on the ground and say, Here, friends, come close, come hither. <laughs> it's time to eat beans. Oh, shit! It's time to eat beans. <laughs> All the slugs would slowly come out of their, their little hidey holes. Chico, Mary Dunn, and Thomas would all come out of their hidey holes. <clears throat> you don't hit me. They'll come out of the fucking. Try to tell a story! <laughs> they all come out of their hidey holes and slowly slither over to the big pile of beans in the middle of the concrete floor <laughs> in the mud hut. <laughs> they were slow, being slugs they were, but that was alright, for Anime was patient. He waited carefully as all of his friends moved close. To enjoy the feast. Oh my, said Annabelle. These beans, they're quite fresh. Indeed, said Liam. I just can't get enough of these French cut green beans from Green Giant. Now with new packaging. Sold fresh always. Green Giant. He looked right at the camera, holding out his small slug hand. With a, with a, with a can, the small, <clears throat> with a small can of <sighs> green giant green beans. I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> of green giant green beans. He showed his giant humanoid eyeballs and he, his humanoid teeth, and he smiled at the camera. Poor Annabelle was truly. Epic. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm losing. I'm losing focus. This game is taking too much of my focus. Uh, oh my god! Said Simon. Look here. Look. Look close. In between a pinto bean and a black bean, there was a small centipede. Dibs on that one. Said. Turkish, tur turkey tom. <laughs> it's a Tennessee turkey. <laughs> both uh, Annabelle and. Oh my god, both Annabelle and. 
I can't do that. What, I need to establish a name for this bitch. I keep changing the name every single time on purpose. And I keep forgetting what the other people's name. Okay, Simon. Oh, Chico, Chico, Chico. Chico. <clears throat> Chico and Simon both slowly race for the beam. They moved in close. Each taking a small bite. It was like Lady in the Trap. They shared the bean equally, out of love for each other and anime. What a beautiful sight, said anime. His yellow teeth grimacing. <laughs> In pure delight. His friends, playfully sharing a bean. A centipede. Ugh. The centipede tried to scurry away quickly. It was still alive after all. Alas. The centipede did not make it. It's it squiggled and squirmed and wiggled and turned. And maybe did the maybe did the macarena. Who knows what centipedes get up to when people aren't looking? <laughs> Who fucking knows with this shit, man? <laughs> I don't, I put, uh, the centi I put the centipede. Oh, okay, whatever. The centipede <laughs> did not escape. And one leg after another was pulled off in, in pure torturing fashion by Chico and Simon. We lost by one point by Chico and Simon. Oh, wow. Hey, guys, said Annabelle. Aren't you forgetting something? They both turned around, the centipede half gone, still twitching on the ground in pure agony calling out for them to just kill him. Break his bones at once. He does not want to suffer any longer. But they turned their, turn their attention away from the centipede, back to where Annabelle was. Annabelle was on top of the bean horde, the dirty bitch. She was going to eat all the beans for herself. Annabelle slowly started sucking down each bean one by one into her massive gullet, the fat bitch. Of course, she would eat them all. Why wouldn't she? That's all women do. <laughs> <laughs> they take. <laughs> they take your car. They take your your money. They take it all away. They take your kids from you. I haven't seen my kids in weeks, months, years. How long has it been? One drop up after another from this bottle. I've simply forgotten. Pardon me. Excuse me. Moving on. <clears throat> Annabelle. Oh. She slowly but surely ate one bean after another. Realizing that they had fucked up going after the centipede, they slowly but surely raced back. Telling her to slow down, stop, save some beans for them. Anime could do nothing but laugh. Oh, my silly little friends. I cannot believe how much you bicker, but it makes me smile just having you with me. And before... <sighs> and before that they could even reach the beans in time, and before Annabelle could stuff that last fat fucking bean down her fat fucking face. Dirty bitch. <clears throat> sorry. Um, Annabelle will save my wife. I'm very sorry. It just... it It's been so long since I've seen Abigail or my son Simon. Anyway, he picked up all three slugs, held them in his hand, and said, I could never ask for better bean friends. For my, no, hold on. Let me try that again. <clears throat> I can never ask for better bean buddies. I hope that we never, ever grow apart. And he, he rubbed each of their eyeballs and tickled each of their stomachs and gave them each a big wet kiss with tongue on their foreheads. Once again, his yellow teeth, his toothless grin, smiling, <laughs> with his blue tongue and, <laughs> and flared nostrils. The camera slowly zoomed in on anime's face now becoming old and wrinkled with time. Time had went by. Very long.
time had frozen for them and them alone. They had sat there for, for ten odd years, growing, wondering, when will reality return? The end. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> uh, uh, bittersweet ending, bittersweet ending. <laughs> oh, man, what happened to them? <laughs> what happened? To find out in the, in the next book when I write it in like, I don't know, like 20 years. Suck it up, Bloom. Story time. <laughs> Now, where were we? Okay, they're frozen in time. Ooh, yeah, it's getting a little crazy. This is good, okay. They're frozen in time. 25 years, was it? Yes. Perhaps a small recap is in order. <sighs> okay. Here we go, there's a lot light, lot riding on this, can't fuck it up. Once upon a time, it had been many years, many years had passed since we last saw our heroes, since we last saw them, since we last experienced what they had to experience. They were trapped in an endless suffering, an endless void. Veering into their minds, you would find nothing but darkness, emptiness, empty thoughts, speculation. What is to become of them? It had been so long since they had seen anything. The retina simply refused to focus. The slug bodies became cold, shriveled. Anime's teeth grew back, strangely, before falling out again. His tongue receded. He had no tongue, no more. He could barely speak. The desert hut, the mud hut, over, it was overgrown. Life had returned to the desert once again. No more sands, no more dirt, no more roughness. Nothing but trees and vines over the past 25 years. Life had returned. Everything was wonderful. Well, outside the, the hut, the small hut that remained was wonderful. It was then, at exactly 25 years later, that the shockwave rippled once more. The shockwave that had frozen them all that time ago came back, shook them to their core. They stumbled, they had woken. They looked around, but they didn't know where they were. What is this? said Annabelle. What's going on? Now thin, she had lost all her weight in that time, all of her heavy breathing over the last 25 years caused her to lose all those excess calories. If only I could say the same about my own wife. Still fat. Simon. Simon was, he had lost his memory. He didn't know what to do, he didn't know what to think, he didn't know what he was. He looked around with his baby blue eyes at the others in pure, innocent fear. And the other one's name was... Chico. Chico had awoken the night before, a fried chicken leg in his hand, eating slowly, watching, licking his lips slowly, the grease, the, the grease stain off his napkin, he patted on his dry, crusty, unlip bombed lips, but still pillowy and soft at the same time. How does he do it? And he said, Jesus Christ took you long enough. Kept you waiting, huh? And he slowly slowed that over to the others. What is the last thing you remember? Chico said. Annabelle says, I don't know, but I'm fucking hungry. Where are the beans at? But there were no more beans. The beans had all disappeared. Other animals had come by, slithered around, eaten a couple. Maybe they just blew away with the wind. The, the, the beautiful Bengali desert wind where the Bengali tigers roam free. 
Perhaps the tigers stopped by and grabbed a couple beans of their own. Who really knows with this shit, man? But anime... Anime was the most distraught. Or he... had truly lost his memory. Simon was lying. Simon was faking. He just wanted to be cool, like Chico was. He saw Chico across the way, the room. And Chico was just, you know, looking really cool, lying there with his chicken wing. Simon wanted to look cool too, so he thought maybe he'd lose his memory and people, people would care about him for once in his life. Maybe people wouldn't just step all over him. But unfortunately, when, when Simon revealed he was just joking, he lost even more respect from his fears. He fell deeper into a deep, dark sadness and never will recover. But anyway, anime, he had really lost his memory. He had lost it all. He was old, he was wrinkled, he was decrepit. He was not the man who he once was. Truly. He could not speak, his tongue had fallen out. His gums had turned green and, and turned to mush. When he put his mouth together, they stuck and, and slicked and, and, and gooeyed away. <laughs> gooeyed away. Like, like fresh gushers, squirted. Like chewing on a fresh pack of fruit roll-ups. Just fucking vile, disgusting, smelled like a cesspit, tar pit, disgusting like my ex-wife. Horrid. Anime looked around the room in astonishment. What is this place? Where am I? What is this? What are these creatures? These things in front of me, this is crazy. This whole world is crazy. You start doing, I don't know, like flips. You start flipping around, doing cartwheels and backflips and handsprings and pure confusion. How could he do these things, he thought. How am I so agile? What does the word agile even mean? He spun around, he did the moonwalk, he grabbed his crotch and said, he, he. He tipped his hat, he spun, and then he sat back down in a daze. What just happened? Where am I? Short-term memory. It was even worse than we all thought. Regardless, Chico said, guys, the world has been frozen this whole time, and I've become stronger. Chico revealed his beautiful biceps. He flexed. Chico was stronger than ever. It turns out Chico actually, he lied as well, except that he, he was cool when he did it because, you know, he was eating chicken. He went to the store literally yesterday. He bought that. He hid that in the microwave. Chico was actually around for the past week. He was working out. He wanted to just be, be real swole by the time they got together, so... Chico was working out. He looks good. I like it. Six pack and all. Mm. Good looking slug. Anyway. Guys, it's been 25 years. Chico exclaimed. I don't know what happened, but this is really good. Took another bite. He took another bite of his turkey leg. It was freshly seasoned with paprika and oregano and garlic powder. A little bit of salt that he put on himself. Gotta be careful though. They're slugs. They'll dry up. Mary Brown's is easily my favorite chicken of all time. With their freshly, freshly cut every day, freshly cooked to order. With their secret ingredient of 25 different spices. Who knows how Chico keeps getting all these sponsorships. Maybe it was Simon last time with the green giant thing. I don't remember, honestly. It could have been Simon. But Simon's out of the picture. He's crying in the corner. He, he's so embarrassed. Anyway, back to the story. Guys, it's been 25 years. What do we do? What do we do, guys? Where do we go? What is out there? Annabelle finally fucking said something useful for once in her fucking life. And she said, well, why don't we just go out and find out? And so they open, they push past the little little drape the you know like in india where they have like like the bead the bead the bead walls the bead doors that don't do shit like what's the point of having like beads that to like cover a door it's like you like if you were jerking off in there the beads they're not gonna hide anything you can clearly see him smacking off smacking his windmill pinning his dill pickle like the beads aren't gonna do anything about that anyway they have one of those maybe like a little little drape off to the side, but it wasn't really covering anything. And they walked through it. The world was full of life. There was trees, there was vines, birds flying overhead. The mud hut had turned to concrete. 
of mud had somehow solidified into a hard rock and turned to concrete. They were in a concrete box. This, I mean, I said it had a concrete, concrete floor last time, so I guess it makes sense, right? Maybe it was concrete the whole time. That was foreshadowing. Yeah, let's go with that. It was concrete the whole time. They went outside and they saw what the world had to be. This is different, said Chico. Sure is. Hey, can I have some of that turkey leg? What'd you say? It was Popeyes. Chico was offended. Popeyes? Are you fucking kidding me? No, you can't have any of my Mary Brown's freshly cooked 25 spices chicken. He looked right at the camera once more. A smirk on his face. He, he pulled out his small slug phone, his mobile, his Motorola, which was still at service. And he saw that he, that Mary Brown just paid him another $2,000 for that perfect ad read and he smirked to himself he raised his eyebrows at the camera put his slug phone back in his gooch and, and looked back at the, the group I say that we explore for a bit explore outside figure out what's going on here anime who was the last to leave the concrete mud hut to leave came out finally scared he heard a bird chirp and he shuddered Thou foul beast, he said, grabbing a stick and whacking at the bird. Luckily, the bird escaped just in time. Please stop, calm down, said Simon. But Simon, everyone just looked at him in annoyance. Since when does Simon get to boss people around? The loser. He's not cool at all. Shut the fuck up, said Annabelle. No one likes you anymore. See, look, look over there. Annabelle looked right out at the, the live studio audience they were in court, uh, recording in front of, all of which were shaking their heads in, in pure disgust. That's to Simon's actions from earlier. One of them threw popcorn on the stage. Annabelle licked her lips, but realized she couldn't eat it. That would break the fourth wall even more than she already had. The contract. She's got to stay within her limits. So she, she fought that temptation. Did a whole lot more than my, my wife would ever would, but okay. Anyway. Let's keep walking, everybody. Let's see what's going on. So they left, and they walked for a while. They walked around for a while. Past a river, a mountain. A small village of, of angry natives who were stabbing a man to death with sharp sticks. They paid them no mind. Everyone's got their thing. You know, some people like furry porn, some people like stabbing, you know, to each their own, right? Everyone's got to get off somehow. No big deal. So they kept walking. Kept walking. And eventually they came across a cave with a small light flickering from inside. Looks like somebody's in there, said Simon. Annabelle just flashed him a dirty look. Simon put his head down. He won't be speaking for quite some time. He's had it. He's had it with people bullying him like this. Simon clenched his small slug fist, pure anger, and was ready to throw one at Annabelle. But then the audience started booing, and so he thought, he thought again. He thought about his contract, about getting paid, like Chico. He won't be getting any money out of this if... If he, if he, if he, if he, if he does that, it's just not cool. Anyway, the cave. I say we take a look inside, said Chico. Simon, who had said that earlier, rolled his eyes, but decided to say nothing more. Okay, said Annabelle. Anime was quiet, but was simply following the group. They slowly moved into the cave. You know, slugs, are, they, when they're really... They walk as fast as humans when they want to. Don't think about it too much. In the cave was an old lady. No, they didn't know that yet. Sorry. No, let's try again. There was a cloaked. There was a cloaked person, cloaked in a, in a blue, a blue cloak with with white symbols on it, painted in white, painted it painted in in some sort of white liquid, some white crusty liquid. Who knows what it could be? Anything, anything white, anything, anything you can think of. That's probably what it was. You think of cum? You're disgusting. Anyway, the person removed their their head their head drift from the from the thing 
from their head. It was an old lady with a crooked old nose and had a bunch of moles and shit. I don't know, maybe she had like crooked teeth as well. Maybe she had no teeth and, and green and it was like fruit roll of gushers. Anime was in love. Oh my god. She just like me for real. He's his first words were. He ran to her. And he held her in his arms and said, Oh my god. You, you're the one. You're the one for me. His breath released from his mouth, from his gullet. The old lady winced. She kicked. She got away. My god. Please brush your teeth. What the hell? She said, reaching for her barf bag. Anime was confused. Her breath stung too. <laughs> but was this worse? He did like the, you know, where you like, I guess your hand and you smell it immediately after. He did that. Because he remembered to do that with his amnesia. Don't think about it too much. Who are you? Said Chico. No, let's, let's let Annabelle do this one. Who are you? Said Annabelle. The old lady, after ratching up her last night's turkey stew, turned to them and said, What my name is, is of no importance. AKA, I don't know what I'm going to call her, so... It's not important what my name is. What is important is what I can do to help you. Except him. He must wait outside. She pointed at Simon, surprisingly, and not Anime, who had done the things that he had done. Simon, who was simply minding his own business, kicking a rock in the corner, looked very upset by this. <laughs> but he decided to wait outside anyway. He did not protest. He did not say anything. He simply glared at the group, who had said nothing, but nearly gave him dirty looks as well. Simon waited outside. He, you could hear him murmuring to himself in frustration. Annabelle told him to keep it down. They were talking. What is the last thing you remember, said the old lady. Well, we were sitting around eating beans. The old lady stopped him right there. Beans? It's been a long time since I've seen a bean. The old lady sat down. What do you mean? Said Simon. Well, don't you know? Beans were outlawed 15 years ago. Chico was in shock. Outlawed? Wait, do you mean there's no more? No one has seen a bean in 15 years. But what a, you know, white beans, black beans, pinto, maybe even green beans if they sold them? Nothing, no beans allowed. The capital has banned them. What? What? This is ridiculous. But I'm fucking hungry, said Annabelle. Well, you'll be happy to know I have some fish. Annabelle shrugged her shoulders. I suppose a girl's gotta eat. She sucked down the whole fish in one bite. It was gigantic. It was like three times her size. I don't know how she did it. She like opened her mouth like real fucking widely, you know, like slugs. I don't know if they have bones. So I, I guess she, it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, humans have a jaw. She probably could just like, like a snake. But snakes have bones too. So she just kind of went around it. Sucked the whole thing down. Fucking fat piece of shit. I guess, you know, you do what you gotta do when you're hungry, you know, you, you get crazy. Everyone kind of tried to ignore Annabelle who was making these weird fucking guttural noises while she was, you know, choking down the last bits of, 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 of sockeye, <laughs> sockeye salmon, something along the lines of <coughs> like a pelican, like a pelican, too big for its mouth, something like that. Disgusting, putrid, sweaty, just nasty woman. I'm good. I'm fine. No more beans. There is one, said the old lady, going on. There is one bean that was seen at the top of Ice Cold Peak on the far side. Meriakita. Meriakita. What's going on? What? Sounds like a made-up word. It is. All words are made up, dumbass, said the old lady. Meriakita is where we are, the world we live in. How do you spell that? Said Annabelle, who was now finished eating the sockeye salmon. How we spell words is of no importance, said the old lady. Oh no, this is better. She was about to go on spelling 
Meriakita. But Simon was getting impatient, and he interrupted and said, Can you guys hurry the fuck up so we can leave? They all stopped and turned and told him, Just keep quiet. Stay outside. In fact, go. Go for a walk or something. Maybe you'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll get stabbed. Maybe you'll walk into a pile of salt and die. Simon, nobody likes you, man. Why are you still here? They all said in unison while staring at the camera at the same time. Even the audience was freaked out. How did they do that? Did they rehearse that? That didn't seem like it was part of the script. Why did they swear? That's weird. <laughs> Must have been. It's crazy. Shit goes crazy when people aren't looking. Simon decided to go for a walk after all. So he lied. Lying Simon. He didn't. He waited outside, but this is where he couldn't see them. Ice Cold Peak, the old lady continued. On Meriakita, there is a single bean that is said to be frozen in time. Is that so? Yes. It is a very powerful bean. A bean like no other. It is called... She paused for dramatic effect as the camera zoomed in on her face, her follicles, her, her, her bug-eyed stare, her fat, droopy, gonzo, drippy nose... Looked like it was about to melt off of her body or her chapped, disgusting old lady lips. A little bit of crack. Looks, she's picking at it and it's bleeding a little bit, like on her, like the left side. Her dimples were just like dimples on dimples because she's been smiling all her life. Maybe she was like in Broadway when she was a kid, you know? Like the, 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 the smile, the pinups, the smiling like that. Her hair was just like, like it was like a bowling ball. Like it's like, a, like just little holes. You could probably like pick her up by them and like throw her around or something. She was a small woman, very light. Could have been a man, honestly. As the old man's dick twitched, he said, "He said to, he said to go to, if you, oh right, I forgot that he has to." Yeah, you, you gotta go. You got. Yeah, you, you gotta go get the the the, 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 the and and the bean. The bean's name is. Hey Peter, remember the time where we went to get the time bean? The beans. Wait, who said that? The time bean. She said finally. She he said they said they said. This is twenty. Twenty forty eight. After all, let's be more respectful, inclusive. It's twenty forty eight. They said. The time bean, said Pico, now sucking the last of his chicken wing bone, sucking the, the, the grease off, sucking every morsel. <laughs> he even ate the fat, and then when he was done, he crunched on the bone itself like a Dorito, just ch chomped it down. I mean, when Chico said that he was getting stronger over the last week, I, I didn't think he meant like that. I mean, I don't even know, right? Like, I wasn't there either. I, I just picked up the script right now. This happened a week ago. Chico can eat bones like that? He's a slug. Do they even have teeth? Anyway, he ate the bone. The whole chicken wing bone was gone. He ate the whole thing. I don't know how. The time bone, the time bean. She said, he said, by the seashore. They were by a beach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, time bean. It is said that 25 years ago, this bean is the cause for humanity's still frame. Still frame? Yes, that is the made up name that we gave to when to everybody who was frozen in time. After all this time. The still frame, huh? It's pretty ominous. Should be. This is a adventure story after all. The audience laughed as the applause like sign, you know, like those in those old shows the the, the sign with the applause. It told them to to, to or like a clap laugh whatever the laugh sign came on and they all laughed at that that was pretty funny i guess even like uh simon who was listening outside and got a little chuckle out of it but he made sure to be quiet so they wouldn't hear him they didn't know that he was still there well which way how do we get to mount icy peak follow the river down take a right Take a left. <laughs> Go around in a circle three times. Then poke the big red button. The path will open for you. 
what the fuck does that mean said annabella but before she could even finish saying that the old lady had covered herself in her cloak she turned into a, a, a mass of bats and she flew out of the cave as it went by it spooked simon and he yelped like a little girl Aye! he said everyone looked back simon you're still here are you kidding me get the fuck out of here si yeah simon what the fuck man were you listening this whole time simon seriously man the audience was booing everybody was booing the other characters were all throwing rocks at him simon ran off crying <laughs> never to be seen again <laughs> but all right now that the dead weight's gone the audience laughed once again i say that we had follow the river just like that old man lady said. I could have sworn it was a hermaphrodite, said Annabelle. What's a hermaphrodite? said Chico. Anime. His interest was piqued. He licked his lips in pure excitement. He already, despite losing his memory, he remembered what that meant. He got very, very excited. We don't have time to describe these things, to go over these things. We have to save the world said Chico, who was now the main character, clearly. And Annabelle, the supporting role, and... <laughs> and anime, the... Uh, comedic relief. Down the river we go. They left the cave, and they... They followed along. The camera pans up to see the world of... Mm, uh, m m shit. Mari Mariakta? The world of Marmalade. It panned up to show the world of Marmalade, and it showed it all. To the left, the, to the left was a volcano. To the right, a beautiful ice land where they were headed. And uh, right above them was a giant, big, fucking red dragon. Which, strangely enough, when you blink real fast, looks like a giant bean with wings. Kind of weird. And the sun. The sun was oddly shaped as well. It wasn't a circle. It was like a semicircle with a divot taken to the top and rounded. A bean itself. A bean sun. A sun bean. Kind of weird. Maybe it was an eclipse. It could have been an eclipse, actually, when you think about it. Like, like, like an eclipse. I mean, it wasn't like like a sharp cut, you know? It was rounded. So, like, what kind of eclipse? Like, what, like what shape would the the moon have to be to do that that's weird also it would be much darker outside than it was to be an eclipse it doesn't quite work i'm confused i'm just as confused as you it doesn't make sense it was a bean sun moving on they fall the river down for a little while you know singing you know um gangster's paradise to pass the time a good song you know from their from their time but the villagers who were listening they remember that song as the song that, you know, that the Vikings would sing when they killed their families. So they all covered their ears and ran. Gangster's Paradise. <laughs> That's terrible. Like a Viking killing your family, singing Gangster's Paradise. They were, s <clears throat> they were singing Gangster's Paradise. And everybody was running. PTSD or something. And they came to a small clearing. And they stopped singing for a moment. As they saw a man on the ground, unconscious. And they slithered over with their snake bodies real, real quick lag, real quick lag in the sand and the grass and the trees. They went up in the trees and they swung off, just for fun, over to the old man. Or not an old man, it was a young man. A young man. With a magic wand. The end. <laughs> That's the end. That's part two. That's part two. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, there it is. Jesus Christ. It's eight o'clock. Wow. <laughs> wow. I literally closed my eyes and I went to another world. I fucking. 
I, I, kid, I kid you not before i started i was like i'm not gonna be able to do this like i'm gonna like i'm gonna forget everything i'm not gonna be able to like stay true to like the original story your characters and then like as soon as i started talking like it all just kind of just started flowing out and i was just like yes this is good this this is it it was a dragon it's a dragon <laughs> it's a dragon it's a bean dragon they're in the world of beans now